What is going on guys welcome back and today I'm going to show you how to build a simple Pomodoro clock in Python and for those of you who don't know what a Pomodoro clock is it's essentially just a productivity technique you could say uh, for timing your work period so I have already implemented this this is what we're going to build today the basic idea is that you have a certain amount of time that you want to have in your work periods then you have a short break and then you have long breaks as well uh, and the idea is that you start the timer uh, with 25 minutes in this case it starts counting down and once the time is passed it jumps to a short break so you work for 25 minutes and you take a short break for five minutes so what happens with this tool here is that the time runs out and then it switches to the short break but I can also skip this here to show you the effect so I click on this and it switches the tab to short break you can see now it's counting down five minutes once this is done uh, we're going to switch back to Pomodoro. By the way, you can also see that we collected one Pomodoro. I think this is Italian for fruit or for tomato or something. Uh, once you skip the short break, you jump back to the Pomodoro. 25 minutes, skip 5 minutes, uh, skip 25 minutes. Then you skip again, short break, then again. And after the third break, what happens after the work period, after the third break, uh, you go to a long break. In this case 15 minutes you can set it up however you want and once this is done you go back to work short break work short break work short break work long break so this is the basic idea we can also reset this start this again and so on uh, this is what we're going to build this is a productivity tool so uh, some people think that this is the best way to work so you basically work for a yeah, medium long period of time, then you take five minute breaks. And after four such periods, you take a long break. Uh, and this is how you are the most productive or something. So this is one idea and we're going to implement it in Python. Now, before we get into the actual tutorial, I would like to mention that this video is sponsored by PyScriptor. And as always, don't skip this part because I think that this can be quite interesting for some of you guys. So PyScriptor is essentially an open source feature rich, lightweight Python IDE. And you can see here on the website that you will find the link for in the description down below what the features are. I'm not going to read all the points here because you can read on your own. But in general, you can see that it has quite a lot of features, finding, replacing and files to do list, uh, support with uh, or integration with certain plugins and so on. So way more than the default Python idle has. The default Python idle, if we want to run it here quickly on the computer, uh, is a text editor with a Python run button. It, it doesn't do much more than that. It has a Python shell, it has a run button, or when you open a file, it has a run tab, and that's basically it. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have PyCharm, and maybe you think right now, why should I care about PyScriptor if I know PyCharm? But the problem with these heavy IDEs is that they're super heavy. They take a lot of memory. Uh, they have a thousand of features that you probably don't need, especially as a beginner Python programmer. Um, and PyScriptor is like the optimal uh, middle ground between those two extremes. So you can see here that we have an IDE, we have syntax highlighting, we have themes, we have uh, this shell down below here, we have certain tabs and certain tools and functions here that are a little bit more advanced, but still the whole thing here has 12, gig, uh, 12 megabytes. It's a zip file that you download. It has 12 megabytes and then the thing runs. It boots on my computer like in three seconds or something, it took me to boot that thing. And PyCharm, in comparison, takes, I don't know, uh, 20, 30 seconds plus indexing. I don't know, maybe two minutes to really get running. And if you need something that is the perfect combination of the simplicity and the lightweightness, if you want, of an idle, but still has a couple of more features than just a basic idle, PyScriptor is a very interesting tool you might want to look at. So if you're interested, click in the link on the description down below. All right, now let us start implementing all of this from scratch. One thing I want to mention here is that I have this PNG file. It's optional. You don't have to use it. Just a basic picture of a tomato. I'm going to use it for the icon of the window. So as you can see in PyCharm on the upper left, we have the PyCharm logo. And by default, we don't have really a uh, special logo when we start a TK intro application, a graphical user interface application in Python. So if you want to have a custom icon, just download a picture of a tomato. Uh, with transparent background or of whatever you want, maybe a timer or something, uh, just a nice to have here. And what we're going to do first, we're going to import a couple of modules. The first module is going to be time, obviously, because we want to have a countdown. So we want to have something that can wait for a second, for example. Um, 
we also want to import threading because we don't want to count in the same thread that we use for the UI because that would mean that as long as we're counting, we cannot access the UI. I cannot press buttons. I cannot use, I cannot move the window uh, while the counting is happening. Or if I move the window, the counting is going to stop. We don't want to have that. So we're going to run this in a separate thread. Um, we also want to have import TK inter as TK. This is the graphical user interface library. Uh, we also want to have from TK inter import TTK. I think the additional T stands for template. I'm not 100% sure about that. But essentially, this allows us to use some more advanced widgets like the taps. Um, and we also want to have uh, just for the logo from TK inter. Uh, actually, I can do this in the same line. Import photo image. And as always, when we're talking about graphical user interfaces, we're going to build a uh, class because in a class we can access UI elements and functions. We don't have to define one first and then access it. Uh, they can access themselves uh, using the object. So we're going to define a class Pomodoro timer or clock, whatever you want. And we're going to define a basic init function init method. We're going to say self dot root equals TK dot TK. We're going to say self dot root dot geometry basically setting the size and the size is going to be in our case 600 times 300 pixels. Then we're going to say self dot root dot title, just some design stuff here. Um, Pomodoro timer neural nine, and then self dot root dot TK. And now we're going to use the icon. So we're going to say TK dot call. And we're going to say WM here, we're going to pass icon photo. Here, we're going to say self dot root dot underscore W. And we're going to pass a photo image object with file being equal to in my case, tomato dot PNG, you can use whatever file you want. Um, and then what we need to do at the end is we need to just call the main loop. So self dot root dot main loop. And then we need to create an instance of the timer and this should already be a basic window with an icon. So if I run this now, you can see that we have uh, the proper dimensions, we have a logo up here an icon up here, a title and this is what we're going to uh, use for our basic window. Um, so in the init method, we're going to do most of the stuff. So here we're going to have all the UI stuff and then we're going to have separate functions uh, for uh, we're going to have separate functions for the functionality. So what functions are we going to have? We're going to have one function that is going to start the timer. So we're going to have a start timer function. Uh, we're going to all pass these functions for now. So we're not going to implement them yet. We're also going to have a special function that is going to start the timer thread. So we're going to say start timer thread. And by the way, I'm not claiming that this is the best way to do things. Um, it's just how I decided to do it in this particular case. Um, then we also need a reset clock and we need a skip. So reset clock and a skip clock and the main logic is going to be in the start timer function. So these functions here are going to be quite simple. So those two are going to be very simple. This is going to be a two liner, I think. And this is going to be basically where all of the logic happens. Um, so what we want to do first, we want to add a couple of UI elements, and this is going to be quite repetitive. So it's not going to be any fancy work unless uh, except for maybe the the tab view. So a new UI element that we have not used already in many videos. Uh, but the basic stuff like positioning labels, grid layouts, and so on is always repetitive. Uh, but first of all, since we're using TTK, we're going to have to define a style. Uh, because we cannot uh, set the font size for the tab view. So we need to do it with a configuration and we're going to do self dot s being equal to TTK style like that. And then we're going to say self dot s dot configure. And this configure is going to allow us uh, to manipulate the T notebook dot tab. And we're going to set a font here to Ubuntu with font size 16. And we're going to do the same thing for buttons. So buttons of TTK should have the same um, 
the same font, so T button. Um, and essentially, I don't think, do we need to use it or is it automatically? Uh, we're going to see. But for now, what we want to do is we want to add the tab view. So the idea is, as I showed you in the preview, we want to have three tabs. We want to have a Pomodoro tab, a short break, a long break. And in there we have different times. So different countdowns and the buttons in the bottom are always there. So they're not depending on the tab, but their functionality is depending on the tab. So um, actually we don't need to do it like that. But in my in my version, uh, if I can run this still here, in my version, what I have implemented is that you can also start from the short break. So if I press start here, it starts the short break and not the Pomodoro timer. So if I skip this, now it goes to the Pomodoro timer. And now I have collected my first Pomodoro. So yeah, just a thing that I decided to do. And because of that, it's um, it, it makes a difference at which tab you press a button. Um, all right, so we have this basic configuration. So let us start with the tabs, we're going to say self dot tabs equals TTK notebook. And we're going to place this at self dot root. By the way, don't be confused that I look at my second monitor. Whenever I prepare code, it's like a lot of code. And I don't remember all the positions and all the parameters and all the exact strings. So I always look uh, to double check if I'm not doing any nonsense here. Uh, otherwise, I would have to constantly Google because remember, programming is 90% uh, Googling. Uh, but essentially, we pack the tabs here. So we say pad and uh, we say fill both. And maybe want to have a padding on the y axis of 10. And the expand is going to be true. Now to this tab uh, notebook, we also need to add the individual tabs. And for that, we are going to use frames. So we're going to say self dot tab one uh, is going to be TTK dot frame. And we're going to make this part of self dot tabs. We're going to say the width of this is going to be 600 and the height is going to be uh, 100. We're going to copy this now three times. We're going to change this to two and three and the rest stays the same. And what we need to do now is we need to say self dot tabs dot ads self dot tab one and we also want to add a text. So this is going to be the Pomodoro tab. And Those are going to be the uh, short break and the long break tabs. And since we packed everything, this should already be there. So we should already see it. As you can see here, we have Pomodoro, short break, long break. And we can also see that the font size is changed because of the config. And now if we add something to tab one, it will only be displayed if Pomodoro is selected. If I add something to tab two, it will only be displayed if this is selected and so on. Uh, so we have a tab view. And now what we want to do is we want to add the labels to the individual tabs. So we want to have three different labels for the countdown and the buttons, as I already said, are independent from the tabs. So we're going to say self dot, what did I call it here? Uh, Pomodoro timer label is going to be TTK dot label. We're going to use TTK since we're already in this TTK uh, environment here. So we're going to say a label. Um, it's going to be part of self tab one, it's going to have a text of default 25 colon zero zero for the countdown start. Uh, and we're going to set the font here, we can set the font to Ubuntu 48. So a bit larger. Uh, and then we're going to say self dot Pomodoro time a label dot pack and the padding on the y axis is going to be 20. So now we can copy this here. And we can copy it one more time. And here we're going to now change this to short break timer label. Like that. And this is going to be part of tab two, and it's going to start with uh, yeah, with five. And this here is going to be changed to long break timer label like that part of tab three. And it's going to be 15. By the way, you can change this however you want, you don't have to use 
uh, the classical 25515. Everyone has a different opinion on this. Um, but I think we should now be able to see that. So let's run this. And you can see here 25, 5 and 15 by switching the tabs. Um, now what we want to have is we want to have below the uh, below the timer, we want to have the buttons and the buttons should be in a grid layout. So we want to have them um, beside each other. And because of that, we're going to add all of this actually uh, after the labels, but we're not going to add this to the tabs. Uh, now I think we can actually do this after the tabs as well. So we're going to say self dot. Um, and now we're going to say start button is going to be TTK dot button. And the button is going to be Oh, first of all, we need to define a grid layout because we need to add this not to root, but to a grid layout. And we're going to add the grid layout to root. So we're going to say self dot grid underscore layout is going to be TTK dot frame and it's going to be self dot root, then we're going to say self dot grid layout dot pack. So the grid layout itself is going to be packed into um, into the root frame. And then these buttons are going to be added to self dot grid layout. Uh, the text is going to be start and the command is going to be self dot start timer threat like that. Um, yeah. And the button self dot start button is going to be put into a grid layout like that. And we're going to have the row being equal to zero and the column being equal to zero as well. And then we're going to repeat this, we're going to have another of those buttons. And this is going to be the skip button. And it's going to have the text skip, obviously, and the command is going to be skip clock. And then last but not least, we also have the reset. The reset underscore button with the text reset and the function reset clock. And of course, we need to change here the columns to zero, one and two. I think this should work now. There you go, we have the buttons here. Now, why is this so large? Was it as large when I tested it? I'm not sure. Let's see. Because I think it was more centered. Maybe it wasn't maybe it's just because I added an additional thing here. All right, because uh, what we also want to add is we want to add a label for the Pomodoro count. So we're going to say self dot Pomodoro um, counter underscore label is going to be TTK label. Uh, it's going to be part of the grid layout, we're going to say Pomodoro's zero by default and the Oh, we don't have a command, but the font is going to be a basic Ubuntu 16. And this is now going to be added to the grid layout, but in row one with column zero and with a column span of three. Um, what is that now? Why did that happen? Why is this on the left now? Okay, wasn't like that before this one, right? Oh, because I'm stupid. I added the Pomodoro timer label, I want to add the Pomodoro counter label to the grid layout. There you go. Now it works. So this looks fine. Um, maybe we want to have a little bit more padding here. So we want to say pad y. I don't know, uh, being equal to 10 or something. Oh, uh, yeah, this looks way better. So now we have the basic UI, all we need to do now is we need to um, 
implement the functionality because the UI is now done. Um, only thing that we might want to have here is some uh, functionality variables initialized. So self.pomodoros is going to be zero, the count of the Pomodoros. Um, self.skipped can be set to false and self.stopped can be set to false as well because those are the things that we're going to look at in the function. So the start timer thread, actually all it, uh, all it has to do is it has to say t equals threading dot threat. And the target of this threat is going to be the start timer. And then we're going to just start this threat. Nothing more than that. Um, self dot start timer. All right. And in this start timer function now, this is going to be where all the logic is. This is the, it's not really complex, but this is the function that will have the most code. Um, and essentially what we want to do is we want to just compare, uh, or we want, we want to see which tab is selected. And depending on that, we're going to run a different timer. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say self.stopped is going to be false in case it was true. Self.skipped is going to be false in case it was true. And then we're going to say the timer ID that we want to access the timer ID is going to be self dot tabs dot index get the index of self dot tabs dot selected. Uh, actually select not selected. And this is going to result in zero, uh, one and two. So we're going to add one to have the selections time of one time of two time of three. Um, and then we're going to make if else statement. So we're going to say if the timer ID is one, then we're going to say the full seconds that we want to use here. So full seconds of the countdown are going to be 60 seconds times 25 because we have 25 minutes A minute has 60 seconds. So this is the time that we need uh, for this timer. And we're going to say while full seconds are larger than zero or greater than zero and we don't stop the loop. So and not stopped. And not self not stopped. As long as this condition is true, we're going to decrease the, uh, the seconds by one. And for this, we're going to for the display, we need to say minutes and seconds are going to be the result of diff mod. So we're going to get the division in the minutes and we're going to get the remainder in the seconds so that we can display that uh, we're going to just say full seconds divided by 60 here like that. And this is going to give us the minutes and the seconds uh, for the formatting. And then we're going to say self dot Pomodoro timer label dot configure. And the text is going to be a formatted string where we're going to say minutes with zero to D like that. And then seconds with zero to D like that. And we're going to say self dot root dot update to see the effect. Then we're going to say time sleep one second and full seconds minus equals one. So this is a basic countdown. Now, one thing that you might want to do as an exercise because I'm not going to do it right now. Um, if you want a UI to react faster, because what, what's going to happen with this UI is that you sometimes press skip and it's going to wait a second until it skips. So or before it skips, if you want to change that, if you want to make it faster, you can also always wait a 10th of a second. So you can wait 0.1. For example, uh, the problem with that is that uh, and you can of course also decrease the seconds by 0.1. So you're making the, the decrease more granular. The problem is that you're going to have floats then and the formatting is going to be a little bit difficult. So you have to find a solution for that. It's not really a difficult solution. You would have to round or something for the display or you want to display the floating point numbers doesn't really matter. But this is one thing that you can do to make this uh, yeah, a little bit better. Um, then what we want to do is after the loop. So if we go out of the loop, we want to check why we went out of the loop. So we're going to say if the loop was ended and it's still not stopped. So it was not stopped manually by a button, for example. Um, or if it was stopped, but it was also skipped because the skip is going to just uh, stop, but it's also going to skip. So if uh, either stop is not true, 
or stop is true and skip is true. If that is the case, we're going to count Pomodoro's plus equals to one. This is important because um, we basically get um, if the loop is stopped for some some other reason like reset or like a stop or any other reason, we're not going to count up, we're only going to count up if the time passes or if we skip the loop. Um, and then we're going to say self dot Pomodoro counter label dot configure. Um, actually, it's not configure, right? It's config. This is the problem with auto completion, my friends. Text and here we're going to have uh, Pomodoro. And Pomodoros. Don't forget the self. And the important thing is that if we have a number of Pomodoros that is divisible by four, we're going to jump to the long break, otherwise, we're going to jump to the short break. So we're going to say, okay, if self dot Pomodoros modulo four equals zero, then we're going to say self dot tabs dot select. And you want to select tab two, which is tab three, actually, so zero, one, two. Um, and we want to also start the timer there, after the selection, because if we select first, and then start the timer, we're going to call this function recursively. Uh, and this function is going to then evaluate again, which tab is selected, but since we selected two, uh, it's going to rerun itself and so on. Um, otherwise, we're going to just say self tabs select one for a short break, self start timer as well. And I think actually I noticed this right now, we should be able to do it like that as well. Because we always start a timer, but we select a different tab before that. All right. Um, so this is the case one. We also have the case that we selected a different tab at the moment. So else if elif uh, tab underscore uh, timer underscore ID equals two. If that is the case, we're going to say full seconds is 60 times five. And essentially, the code is quite similar. So I'm going to copy it. Um, at least this part of the code should be quite similar. Uh, this works, this works. So now here we have not the Pomodoro timer label, but the short break timer label, and we're going to change this, the rest stays the same. Um, now here we only want to check if the loop was stopped uh, manually or not. So if the loop was not stopped again, so not self stopped, or it was skipped, then we're going to just say self dot tab select. And after a short break, we always go to Pomodoro. So select zero self dot tabs, uh, self dot start timer. Again. And then we have elif timer ID equals three. Then we're going to say false seconds 60 times 15. This is as well the same as before. Uh, the difference is here again, long break time a label. Uh, and then again, we say if not self stopped, or it was skipped, self taps, select zero, because after a long break, we always go back to Pomodoro as well. Start timer like that. So this is actually the whole logic here, we can also add if we want to an else branch that says, okay, print invalid timer ID like that. Um, and this is the basic start timer function. All right, so we can give it a test run. But one thing I want to change since we have this formatting with uh, the leading zeros is I want to change the default here to zero five. And then at least a countdown should work without being able able to stop it, obviously. But if I now press start, 
you can see that this timer is running, those timers are not running. If I press start here, those timers are running. The problem is, of course, that we're now running two threads and they're going to yeah, run in parallel. This is not necessarily good, uh, but we can also decrease the time, for example, uh, let's just do it for a test here. We're going to say full seconds is equal to five here, and it's going to be equal to five here, and it's going to be equal to five here. So we always have five seconds. And this should already be able to jump between the individual tabs. So if I just wait for the time to pass, it should jump to short break. As you can see, it counts up the Pomodoros, then it goes back to Pomodoro and it's going to do that four times. And then after it reaches four, it's going to jump to a long break. So we can wait for that as well. You can also see that I can move the window and it still continues to count down. This is because we're using threading. Um, and now we have the third break. Then we're going to have four Pomodoros and uh, we're going to jump to a long break. There you go. Okay, so that part works. We now need to implement the skipping and the reset. It's actually not uh, yeah, difficult at all. The reset is quite simple. We want to set everything to the beginning uh, value. So self stopped is going to be true. Self dot skipped. Oh, sorry, not true. It's going to be false. Self skipped is going to be false. Self dot Pomodoros is going to be zero self dot uh, labels. So all the labels are going to be set to the default value. So text is going to be um, 25 zero zero for the short break time a label, it's going to be zero five. And for the long break time a label, it's going to be 15. Um, yeah, so we have the labels, we have all that. And one thing, the Pomodoro counter label needs to be set to zero as well. Text is going to be Pomodoros zero. And this automatically stops all the, um, or does it stop all the timers? No, it doesn't stop all the timers. So we need to set this actually to true. And then it's going to be set by uh, to false anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay, this works. So we're going to set it to true. And we're going to set set skip to false because then of course, uh, it's going to break out of the loop. And we can already test this by running the loop and then just uh, resetting. There you go. By the way, uh, or actually, no, we can leave that for now. Um, let's go to the skip clock function. This is actually quite simple. We're going to get the current tab that we're at, because this is going to determine um, actually what we're going to set the individual texts to. So current tab is going to be self dot tabs dot index of self dot tabs dot select. If the current tab equals zero, then we're going to say self dot Pomodoro time label dot config. Actually, we can copy this from up here. LF current tab equals one, we're going to do that. LF current tab equals two, we're going to do that. Because we want to reset the text for the respective tab. Uh, what do we have here? Duplicate code. Okay, it doesn't really matter. So one thing that we might want to fix, I didn't fix it in the original version, but we can do it. Uh, we can say uh, if a timer is already running. So we can say self running equals false. We can say okay, if not running, we can do all that. And we can set running to true. And of course, here we need a self. And otherwise, we're not going to run additional threats. So we can only have one timer running. Uh, the important thing, of course, is Oh, did I delete something here? Oh, I chose the wrong function. Sorry, we need to do it here. If not self dot running, 
cell dot running equals true. And of course, when we reset all this, we just set self running to false. All right, so this should actually be it. We should be done with the Pomodoro timer now. Let's see if it works. We start it. We can wait for it to switch. Let's see if that still works. There you go. We can skip it. So it goes to, okay, the skip does not work. Or does it work? No, it doesn't work. It only works the second time. Okay, what's the problem here? Uh, let's see what is the problem there. When we skip, what do we do? Oh, obviously, self dot stopped has to be true. And self dot skipped has to be true. Otherwise, the effect is not there. And we just reset the label. All right, so skip, 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 skip. Okay, this seems to work. Again, if you want to eliminate the delay of the skip button, you can uh, make the counter more granular. Now we can reset. Now let's try to start from here works. There you go. Uh, we can reset. Um, and I think we should not be able to start multiple countdowns. Yeah, we're not able to do that. There you go. So now we can delete these full seconds here to make the timer right again. There you go. And this is how you build a simple Pomodoro timer in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.